So, some of you may know that I started a series on YouTube shorts there where I take KOF characters and I pitch guest appearances for them. So, Ooh. more than likely, I know Cheshire Cat Smiles is going to be on the show again in the future. And I'm pretty sure Onyx might want to be back in the future or whatnot. I couldn't have done it with Vault or cool. Creepy because Vault and Creepy, like, they kind and they know a little, they're, they don't, they know a little something, something about KOF. But I'm just glad you're here because we can play this game then. So instead of me pitching the guest appearances, I'm going to give you like five random KOF characters and you pitch a guest appearance for them. How's that sound? Okay. All okay. right. So I'm going to give you like, I guess I, we're going to do five, but this one's not going to count. It's going to be a bonus as we're talking about them. Vice and Mature, where would you put them? Like Mature? Hmm. Doesn't have to be together. It can or be separate. Combat. Both of them Mortal, Mortal Kombat? Kombat. Both of them Mortal Kombat? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mortal Kombat. Why? Vice was driving that situation, and, and I could see Vice getting fatalities, and I could see Vice mm -hmm. doing fatalities, and she was have some really messy fatalities, and oh, her fatalities yeah. were just as fun. And even Mature. Mature has got a hand and this is a kind of, I think it, it got to be, I don't think Escobar ever let in their main IPs ever be in a game like Brutus Mortal Kombat to be on some real shit. But on a hypothetical, let's say they will. Vice and Mature, I think, be the characters that they'll be comfortable seeing their guts get ripped out, they get beheaded, Scorpion freaking using his spears to rip out their intestines. I can see that. But I also see Vice and Mature being just as vicious to the MK cast, messing them up, riddling down to nothing but bones and organs. And I just feel like, again, like Mortal Kombat, we'll get to see the true of the brutality of the characters, but take it to another level. Due to um, MK's beautiful graphic, we can talk about a lot of things, but MK does wrong nowadays. And one thing they do right is those graphics are very beautiful. I can definitely see Vice and Mature driving again like Mortal Kombat. And if it could be Mortal Kombat, someone needed a little more safe, you know, the game is super old and I'm not sure how many people know about it. Um, I'm just the champions. Ah. No, Eternal Champions. That's Eternal not Champions. Champions. Eternal Champions, what to say. Yeah. Yeah, Vice, I think, is a given for Mortal Kombat because we've seen supers from her so much so that it one of them basically hints at her possibly being into cannibalism. So there's that. Mm-hmm. And Me like, sounds wild. I would love for that to come back at 15. Yeah, mature. Yeah, she could. Like I said, you know, adding a little bit of edge to her would definitely, like, you know, I think it, I think something could happen. I just find it a little bit, I find, like, the vision a bit funny, like, her doing, like, the freaking, the wall slam that, you know, Rugal is mostly known for. It's just like, it's just, <laughs> yeah, it's just, yeah, it's like, it's just imagine, like, she just does that and then, like, that's a brutality and they just blow up when they hit the wall. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay, first character. And I picked this one on purpose, and I'm pretty sure you might know who it is I'm talking about. Zarina. Oh. Where's Zarina gonna go? Oh, Zarina? Oh, my baby, Zarina. Oh. Either this person with cutesy, I would say Arcana Hearts, but I want her a game that will actually be played by a decent amount of people. I would say put Zarina in Tekken. Ooh, Zarina in Tekken, so we're gonna have the Christie showdown, huh? <laughs> I would put Zarina in second. We'll have Zarina versus Eddie, Christy if she comes back. And I don't know why I'm acting like just. <laughs> yeah. That would be kind of cool, like, you know, just have her in Tekken 8 or whatnot. But Onyx here knows more about Tekken, like, than I do, because, like, I only really. I got into Tekken 7 very late, and Tekken 8, you know, it's still kind of in the early phases and all that. I'm having fun with Azucena, uh, I don't think. So far, it's been duds for me in the first yeah, season I'm, pass. I personally, nothing about Safina. Mm -hmm. No, Zarina. I said Safina. God. <laughs> it happened. Right it happened. It happened. But Zarina, another thing about her, you know, she's a 2D character. She wouldn't be a game-breaking character in a 3D fighter. Because right. she doesn't use projectiles. And her moves are more akin to that of a 3D fighter. So Zarina wouldn't be like, plays with like, oh my God, I'll come and geese effect. She'll be like, maybe people not care for it. It's like, oh, she's just not popular enough for this game. They have better came with representations who deserve the spot. But if she were to be in a game like Tekken, she wouldn't be unbearable. She'll be fun, but not unbearable to fight. You don't think people are going to be annoyed with the do 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 They're going to be getting hit with that over and over. <laughs> I mean, that'd be so that they need to practice more. But I, mean, I don't think that'd be a problem. I think Zarina would be pretty fair in Tekken. In a game I'm like being Tekken. facetious. She'd be pretty fair. I'm being facetious. I'm pretty, I know, sure, I I'm, I'm pretty sure I butchered the pronunciation of that, too. I'm sorry. 
<laughs> you see, do a Damon be saying like her this like she like she does her fighting thing like she's like gotta go pee. I'm like, what? What? The she's doing song what? <laughs> like, like, she always be saying like she, like, she gotta go pee. Like she's doing samba. She's doing samba as an actual dance. It's actually a part of her fighting style. <laughs> But anyway, so yes, what's your next oh, one? Oh my god, I'm gonna have to try my best to unsee that now. I'm gonna have to try my best to unsee that. Oh my god. <laughs> All right, here's a wild pick right here. Even though technically this character is not native straight up to King of Fighters, they have been in it. What about Theo? Metal Slug Theo. Theo, Theo, and it has to be a fighting game, right? Yes. Okay, see, I could think something else for Fio, but it's not a fighting game. But let me see, Fio fighting game. Put Fio in freaking Overwatch. Ages <laughs> <laughs> <No. laughs> of mayhem. Bro. I wouldn't mind that. Somebody, somebody is gonna get mad at me for saying that. I don't even care at this point. <laughs> oh. oh, well, fuck them. But um, Fio, if I had to put game, Fio in the game, I would see Undernight in birth. Mm, Fio in Undernight. I like that. I miss Fio. Like, I do, like, if there's anything that I really appreciate about Maximum Impact, it is the fact that they full-fledged Fio as, like, a whole freaking character. And it's like, I, I mean, at, at that time, I didn't see that coming. Like, I just thought when it came to, like, King of Fighters, I just thought they were ignoring freaking Metal Slug, really. I know, like, she was a striker at one point. Impact did a lot of things that were innovative. And I think Mass Impact was not appreciated for its time. It had its fault. I was staying 10 toes down. I don't care today. I don't exist no more. Massive Impact was very innovative for its time, but people didn't want to appreciate it because the mindset at that time really wasn't there. I think now Massive Impact was more current and it got more, get more love. And speaking of Massive Impact real quick, another thing which I doubt is going to happen, so I'm not, not going to hang up on it. <laughs> it does suck that we get Keo, Hey Dash, Ash, and Shune in one game finally, but Albamira is not nowhere around. And I think Albamira really would be a good pick. Even if you're gonna put one Massive Impact character, he's not even he's not even my favorite. But as the protagonist of that series, it would be really nice to put Albert in KY's 15. Yeah. But I'm not gonna expect that to happen. And honestly, as the smart thing for SK to do that outside of Vice Mature to put in Shen Wu if they're gonna put in any more characters in Mei Lee. But yeah. we'll move on. So yeah, but I feel under night ember. Yeah, that's I don't know why I thought you were about to pitch to have Shune like in the max maximum impact. <laughs> oh no, no, no. <laughs> I would probably be a new Master Impact game anyway. And I can actually see them doing that anyway. Oh so they always God. did. They got Keo and Ash. Yeah, I could definitely see them putting Shune in a, in a future Master Impact game that ever was a new one. Eh. Do you think that the Shune saga is going to end? Like, I know we're kind of like, you know, I know we're kind of, it's kind of like a little bit of a detour from what we're talking about. But do you think that the Shune New Age verse saga is going to end in 16? And, no, it should end in 15 now. It should not even care to 16. Honestly, especially if the rumors are true that we're going well, to be my bad. I'm, 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 my bad. I messed that question up. I mean, it's like, did, I was gonna, I messed that question up because I, I was basically trying to ask, like, if do you think that 15 is going to be the end of it? Like, or I should have asked, like, do you think it's going to continue in 16? I hope not. Like, they could keep it as a subplot, but Shune, honestly, at this point, SK needs to take their losses with Shune as a protagonist. Keep the saga short. It could be different, but yeah, he does not need a three game saga. Let's keep it. That's 14, 15 is good enough. I feel like at the end of 14, I mean 15 with the conclusion, because obviously the winner of that tournament was Mate Kun, Shune, and Ben and Marwu. Look at how the story breaks down. And you think otherwise, I think you're just kidding yourself. <laughs> yeah, Shune and Isla had that moment. Yep. It's a Shune say Isla for being taken by Otama bitch. <laughs> and you know, he that's used that. my name so for that character. <laughs> <laughs> so we know, I think that's just a perfect way to end that saga. Shune's going on, on a journey that Picking stuff out, it's just looking for him. That, that's something they could do as a subplot for 16, how they come team. Because also, I think, like 90% certain yeah. when Kim I 16 does come around the team for Shune, it's going to be Shune, Isla, and Mate Siku. I'm like yeah. 90% certain they're going to do that. I'm like, I'll be shocked that that's like not the team for that. I think that team is kind of locked in already. Yeah. Could be wrong. Strange things have happened. I think that team is locked in. Yeah. It's uh, like... Yes, I think right now. Oh, go ahead, Chris. I'm sorry. I was just going to say, like, I was just going to say. <laughs> Just, here's the thing like i understand a lot of people there's a nice chunk of people that like shune whether people want to believe that or not like i've been I, i've been stuck between the vicious shune haters and the aggressive shune lovers like crazy honestly 
I'm like, critical of Shune, but I do like Shune. But like whenever, I mean, I like him too. Like I say, he's still a fun character to play at the end of the day. But Very I need fun. people to understand when people talk about them hoping that the saga is over, that doesn't mean his time as a character is over. That doesn't mean his story isn't over. And I can kind of get the fear a little bit because, you know, you look at K-Dash, it's like once that story wrapped up, him and the other Ness characters have been just kind of hanging around, really. It's like, you know, we can't really, K-Dash really got himself an audience. He got pretty popular and I don't think we need to like cut him out of anything, even though, I mean, but it's like, I just need people to understand that just because he ain't the protagonist doesn't mean his story is over. There's, I mean, everybody has their own stuff going on in KOF. You know what I'm saying? And I think S and K, I'm just guessing here, they feel that they invest so much in their protagonists where it's like, we're not just going to throw them away after being done with them. I mean, yeah, you know, Ash stayed dead for a game, but I mean, he obviously came back. And once again, at least for me, Ash dying and staying dead for a game made way for the new protagonist, Shune, because it was his actions that led to Verse even forming. So now, of course, that's how I say that. That's like, that's the reason why, at least in my opinion, I think, you know, he made way for Shune. But I just need to... Also, I want to say that before I could go through. Mm -hmm. um, Ash being dead at the 13, it made his death feel real. Because at oh, the time, he didn't know how Lord. to bring him back. Oh, and not Lord. only that, <laughs> it made you... It made... It, it made that's why, to this day, a lot of people talk about it. I know a lot of people, I guess, majority came up since the next saga was the best saga. I would always say Nintendo down to tell the Ash the best story SK told. Okay, it was giving a start, a good middle, and a beautiful conclusion. Now, like I said, I didn't expect SK to keep Ash gone forever, but it was that belief that he actually took him out. When he said, when I still remember how I felt when he said, I messed up Betty. I um, goodbye, like, and he, he got part of you could see Betty like, Ash, you could literally feel blood, like, Ash, please don't go. Please don't go. Because she really wanted to say, she, she finally figured out Ash was doing all this. Stop his ancestors from ruining the world they are in now. Because you mentioned in the beginning, Ash was this vile, disgusting person who kept hurting <laughs> our protagonist. Like, why did he do that to Chesaru? And then we see his actions in 11. Ash, he doubled down. He was even more of a vicious prick in 11. When he got at Eeyore, he went right into on Betty and she tried to get in his way. Like, he was determined that Ash really sold you on the idea I'm a bad guy. I'm a bad guy. You're not supposed to root for me. You're not supposed to like me. You want to see, but when you finally feel like it all came together, like, oh my God, this man, he wasn't this bad person. He made us out to be. He made enemies in order to trick his true enemies to trust him. And when he thought, so he was willing to be hated because he knew it was better to be hated by all these people who loved him than for him to try to be this good person knowing that he, he, I didn't stay good. He would never got as close to Psyche. He would probably never have succeeded and bring his Psyche down the way he did. You know, it didn't, it failed, but it would have felt a lot worse had Ash tried to go by a more noble route. So he came, the villain, to ensure that the villains didn't get their way at the end. Yeah. And I think that was such a beautiful story. How many times do you follow a protagonist? Like, you look at Ash, like, this is the cat I'm following. I hate this guy. I hate this guy. This guy's a jerk. This guy treats his face. This guy's Shen Wu. Person's back on Dulan. Beefing with Elizabeth, like he's he's harm with Chesu. He he saw Eori's Yasinki. This guy, well, I'm, I'm not rooting for this guy. I can't wait to see this prick get taken down. And you see at the very climax, Amy Ash did was to stop the real evil from taking power. And then come his revival in KOF 15. What was it? Say his name and they don't know him. Do you believe in Ash Crimson? Do you believe God, Joe Henry. <laughs> Let me stop. Oh, I know that one. I would not get that because my friends, my friends, <laughs> my good friends, Elisa and Miss Anna, I love them to that. They are so, when they, every time TNA comes on or it pops on NXP, they start singing a song like, oh, God. That man. I, I, I like mean, Joe Henry, though, but it's his theme music. It's the most funny thing I think I heard in a long time. For that a man memed his way into stardom. Not the company, y'all. Don't do it. <laughs> not the company. <laughs> <laughs> not, the, not the start with the, the, the talented woman wrestlers. He saw, like, saw that as, you know, well-known. Yeah. But like I said, that's what a lot of people say about wrestling. You got a good gimmick. It was sick for a very long time. Oh, you got to find God. a good gimmick. You have to pound the back it up because Joe Henry had that in tenfold. The man can wrestle. 
He just had to get something that, you know, people could really get synonymous with him now. Damn. So that's when you think of Joe Henry, you even think of his theme song, and then, you know, him being a great wrestler is a bonus. How in the world did we freaking stumble into wrestling? It was my fault. <laughs> <laughs> just, you know, with the, you're going to fall into many pit holes. Oh, yeah. I tell people all the time, you want to do my live. You're, with me, you're never going to get it. We're going to get to the end, but you're going to go through like seven different routes. Oh, yeah. You're like, where, where are we going? And that, that's the time when you talk to me. Oh, you're never yeah. going to get a straight path. You're just never. If you expect that from me, you're talking to the one person. Oh, you're talking yeah. To the one person. Wrong. Find person. someone else to talk to. Because Rolling we, all the we way gonna back. Go to this direction, and we're gonna go. We we will be we will be, we'll be somewhere in Australia. They're like, how do we how we end up in China? <laughs> then we're somewhere in the planet Pluto. You'll be like, okay. Then I went back into the U.S. and then somehow we're in now in Mexico, locked up, one away from the the gang members. Then we're somehow back in China. Yeah. But this time we have a, a West war in China. So now we gotta get away from the, Chi the Chinese we got gang members in the, the, in the <laughs> them. And we just somehow we're now somewhere in the black hole. We don't know how I got in the black hole, but we're there, and I mean, get out, get back on planet Earth. We That's a conversation with me, China. especially when we talk about multiple things. We got a warrant in China, he says. Rolling back to Yo, our original just, game. Yeah. <laughs> Rolling back to the original game here. Where are we sending Adelheide? Adelheide, uh, it's safe for me to say this, but it's like safe, but I can't really think of Adelheide. is such a niche character, unfortunately, despite the fact that he is the son of the most well-known antagonist in the fighting game in general, which is Rugo Bernstein, for those who don't know. I would say Adahad is a street fighter. I mean, that's, I guess, I feel that's like, it's, he doesn't, to me, I don't get enough of a feel of Adahad to know where else to put him but street fighter. I think I, once I get to that point in the series, I might end up saying street fighter. <laughs> and if I do, I'll, <laughs> and if I do, I'll just clip this right here and then put it in the short. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll just put Adaha in Street Fighter. That, I, I, that's the best I can do. He doesn't get, he's so much of an enigma, and I wish he wasn't. Because he's, you know, he's not my favorite. He, I, I know so many KOF fans who love him, who love the character. And he is a cool character. Not my cup of tea. He's one of those characters I personally don't care for him, but I love how other people like him. And that, I, don't, I know that's so strange. That's so strange, but I, it's not a character I care for. It's not a character I would go up in arms to have. But I like the fact that he's liked by other people. That's I'm, that's weird, but that's how I feel about Adaha. But yeah, Street Fighter I mean, is the only thing best for him. You know what's best for business? Like you know who the people like and all that. So I mean, I don't find that strange at all. Where are we yeah. sending Wolfgang Krauser? Krauser? Yeah. Krauser. Oh, that's a good one. Krauser. Krauser. Mm, Krauser. Let me see why I'm gonna send Krauser. Cause there's two games in my mind. I'm trying to think. What's, I'm not. I know it'd be game breaking realistically. Realistic is game breaking for him to send them there. But Virtual Fighters. Ooh, VF, okay. <laughs> what was the other thing you had in mind? I was almost going to say, you know, like, Killer Instincts, but I'm like, no, no. I, I, if I see, cause I feel like Virtual Fighter is like a... Rookie Krauser, you know, like, say, it's Fader Fury, you know, fictional fantasy stuff. He gives me, like, authentic fighting game wars tournament. And I think, uh, like, someone like him, he was sponsored, want to be, inter like, sponsor tournament of the best. But obviously, dead in Fader Fury. But I feel like Rookie Krauser... He was driving on like, a setting like virtual fight. The only thing that makes him game break out the hits like blitz boy, blitz boy. I don't think, I think if people think Dual is a nightmare to fight, I think a lot of real prep character players will be like, I'm tired of doing these projectiles. I so you know, that's the only thing outside of Blitz Ball though, I think Krauser will look very unique in a game like Virtual Fighter. <laughs> Nicely put there. <laughs> I'm just trying to imagine that now then, because at first I thought you were going to say Tekken. I thought you were going to say Tekken. <laughs> now, Tekken 2's Tekken, Tekken saying that he would be fine with it. It's, like, it's, a, it's a boring pick for me. Like, it will work, because Tekken has none of the geese. It's just like, that. that's such a safe pick. And I want all my picks to be safe. I want to be chaotic. It's just in my nature. I don't want all my picks to be safe. I got my safe pick with Adahel already, and I got my safe pick with Zarina. So I, I want to be a little more chaotic. Right. Where would we send Xanadu? At all hype. <laughs> <laughs> um, no. If I'm going to send Xanadu somewhere, I think who will actually be hilarious to see Xanadu at, it will make no sense. A con of heart. Uh, I'm just kidding. I'm giving my little <laughs> to the mic now. <laughs> Dark stalkers. 
I would send Donna do the dark mm, stalk. He would actually be good at dark stalk. He actually would. He got the creepy factor about it. Like he's the, 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 the scariest monster they're all, a crazy person. Yeah, and like he got all the other freaks around him and everything. <laughs> like so even people not? who are like, ooh, ooh. Even people who are like, oh my God. Like, you know, he's a human. No, maybe the dog stalkers aren't so bad. Maybe these are the people I need to be hunting. Cause this is crazy. <laughs> maybe somebody in Dark Stalkers can tell us what his deal is. Maybe, maybe it's something far past. Imagine that. if Donald Duke had a conf confrontation with Jedi, Jedi like with the whole speedest thing in his stage, and Zondu like, Jedi, like, what are you talking about? <laughs> what are you talking about? You make no sense right now. You're pissing me off. Where is Dimitri? Where is Morgan? Why are you here instead in front of me? <laughs> the power of the light, the light comes to shatter the darkness. Whoa. And just like, I don't know why this is happening to me right now, but this man will leave my sight in like the next five seconds. I'm a really loser in Mac Eye. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Yes, Dark Stalkers. Dark Stalkers is where I put down to do ass. Yeah, I like that pick. I actually like that pick a lot.